All right, this one is a little tricky. So um, get some paper, write down everything that you need to with me as I'm doing them, work them with us or with me, and um, just try not to get bogged down in all the steps. So this lesson, we're gonna be adding fractions that have radicals in the numerator. So there's a lot of steps here. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate the radical on both fractions. Both fractions, you have to eliminate the radical. So in order to eliminate this radical, we're gonna multiply top and bottom by square root of two. Top and bottom by the square root of three. When I do that, I end up with three square root of two over two plus five square root of three over three. Now I have to have a common denominator. So if I'm looking at two and three as my denominators, what can they both become? Well, they can both become six. Three can become six by multiplying by two, whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Two can become six by doing times three, whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. When I multiply all that out, I end up with nine square root of two over six plus 10 square root of three over six. Then I just add or subtract accordingly. Remember your denominator is gonna stay six. Your top you're gonna add, but here's the truth of the, of the situation. Nine square root of two plus 10 square root of three. Those are not like terms. So I can't actually add them. So that whole ugly thing is our answer. And I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, eight squared over the square root of five plus three over the square root of six. Step one, eliminate your denominator radicals. In order to do that, I'm gonna do times the square root of five. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Square root of six, whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. When I do that, I end up with eight square root of five over five plus three square root of six over six. Okay, now I have to find a common denominator. So what can five and six both become? They can both become 30. So my common denominator will be 30. To get from five to 30, I multiply by six. To get to six to 30, I multiply by five. Same thing to the bottom. So when I do all multiplication, I end up with 48 square root of five over 30 plus 15 square root of six over 30. Now that I have common denominators, I can simply add or subtract accordingly. And this is 48 square root of five plus 15 square root of six. Those are not like terms. So it has to stay 48 square root of five plus 15 square root of six. Now here's where this gets tricky, okay? I sigh because I don't like doing this. 48 over 30 can reduce. They can both be divided by three, which leads me to 16 over 10. I can also divide 15 by three. And because, that kind of looks like a rubber ducky, and because all three terms, 48, 15, and 30, can all be divided by three, I have to reduce it, all right? If they can't all be divided, don't worry about it. And the truth is, if you don't fully reduce it, I'm probably not even going to count it wrong, if I'm just being honest with you. I will make a note of that. Um, but then give you partial credit. 
The only way you can reduce is if all of those terms that are there can be divided by the same number. So eliminate your radicals, find your common denominator, add or subtract, and then if you can, try to reduce. All right, here are four practice problems, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to write all four of these down or take a picture of this or whatever, and then do number one, check it with me. Do number two, check it with me. Do number three, check it with me. And then we'll do number four. I know number four looks different, but after I made this slide on this video, I was looking over your homework and some of these are in there and they haven't shown you any. So I wanna do one of those before you do your homework for the week. So try number one, then come back and check it with me. All right, let's look at number one. So the first thing I'm going to do is eliminate the radical in both of these. So multiply this by the denominator. Multiply this by the denominator. So I end up with 2 square root of 3 over 3 minus 9 square root of 7 over 7. Now I need a common denominator. 3 and 7 can become 21. I get there by doing 3 times 7 and 7 times 3, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. So when I multiply all that out, I have 14 square root of 3 over 21 minus 27 square root of 7 over 21. Now, 14, 21, um, I have no idea what I was fixing to say, so <laughs> 14 square root of 3, 27 square root of 7, those are not like terms, so I just have to leave it, because square root of 3 is not the same thing as square root of 7, all over 21. And since 14, 27, and 21 can't all be divided by the same number, that's my answer. Here is number two. If you haven't tried it, go for it now. All right, let's work this one. So the first thing we're going to do is eliminate our radicals. Multiply that by square root of 2. Multiply that by square root of 7. What I end up with is 6 square root of 2 over 2 plus 10 square root of 7 over 7. Now I need to find a common denominator. 7 and 2 can become 14. I get there by multiplying 2 times 7 and 7 times 2 and whatever I do to the bottom, do to the top. So then I end up with 42 square root of 2 over 14 plus 20 square root of 7 over 14. Now here's um, a problem. I cannot add 42 square root of 2 and 20 square root of 7 because they're not like terms. So I simply have 42 square root of 2 plus 20 square root of 7 over 14. Now here is the thing. 42, 14, and 20 are all even numbers, which means I can divide everything, whole numbers, radicals don't matter, by 2. 42 divided by 2 is, let me get my black pen, 21. Radical doesn't change. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Radical, about a space, doesn't change. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and there's no radical there, so that just stays. So our full answer is 21 square root of 2 plus 10 square root of 7 all over 7. So remember when I said there's a lot of things happening here. All I can tell you to do is take it one step at a time. 
eliminate your radical, find your common denominator, and then if you can, reduce. Here's number three. Now this one is wonky because there's no numbers here. So just give it your best shot and then come back and check it with me. All right, the how-to doesn't change just because it's letters. I will tell you, that's written terribly. Let me do that. It will be more confusing simply because it's letters. And it's different. Oh, gosh, what am I doing? It's different processing this. So, there we go. Our step one is still the same to eliminate our radicals. So what I end up with is negative B square root of A over A plus negative A square root of B over B. So my first step, I eliminated my radical. My second step is to find a common denominator. Well, I have to have all of the pieces, so it'll be AB. Multiply this set by B. Multiply this set by A. Now what I have here is going to be negative B squared. Square root of A. B times negative B is negative B squared. And all of that is over A, B. You can write B, A, because that's the order this is in. But typically, they want your letters in um, alphabetic order. Plus negative A squared, A times A. Um, square root of B over A, B. So now I have a common denominator and I can add my tops, but I can't add a square root of A and a square root of B. So my whole answer, and talk about ugly, is this lovely answer. And the truth is, you probably just would write this as minus. Nothing can be simplified, so that whole thing is your answer. Don't get bogged down in all of the letters and numbers. Just take it one piece at a time. Get rid of your radical and your denominator. Find your common denominator, and then just work through it. Now here's the fourth one, which has not the same thing that we've been doing, but you have this in your homework, and you haven't seen it. So I wanted to throw this in here real quick. I can't do anything inside, so I need to look outside, and I just multiply this in. Remember, radical times radical, square root of six times this is two. Square root of six times seven, I'm so tired, is 42. And then six times eight, the square root of five, is eight square root of 30. Now here's the thing, you should reduce that square root of 42 and the square root of 30, but there's a lot happening this week in this lesson, so just leave it like that, okay? And you are only going to have one or two of those, I believe. Um, you know what, let me double check your, yeah. Um, if you want to reduce that, I will let you, but if you don't, I'm not going to count it wrong this week, and we'll just sort of check it and work from there. All right, your homework is for, um, I believe it's for A and for C. That's not in front of me. And if you get bogged down, let me know.